All right. Well, good morning, everyone on the East Coast or pretty much in the U.S. Um, and good afternoon, good evening for those that are over in Europe and Asia. So um, my name is Kevin Tuffner. Um, like the intro, um, I the community is pretty important to me. I, I started a bunch of user groups in the, the Carolinas and speak at a handful of other ones throughout the U.S. Um, I've been privileged uh, to speak again at uh, Hashi Talks. Um, I spoke at the first one when it was the, a single day, and now we're up to two days, which is uh, quite amazing for the amount of topics. Um, from a HashiCorp kind of stack perspective, um, I've been a practitioner for over kind of four years and helping clients, um, you know, transform across, you know, the entire HashiCorp ecosystem. Um, from an IT perspective, um, I feel I'm pretty veteran. Um, I still do remember the first day in IT, like most people. Um, but I've been in IT for over 20 years, and um, I typically focus on obviously hash, everything HashiCorp um, and um, things like Kubernetes and uh, automation uh, techniques. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, whenever I randomly post them, I'm, I'm kind of out there, and my email address is you know down at the bottom. So what are we actually gonna talk about today? Um, you know, this is a pretty big kind of theme I've kind of seen um, where, you know, you, you kind of deploy Vault, you get a couple of use cases going, but, you know, how do you streamline day two operations? Um, you know, the goal out of the session, um, unfortunately it's 30 minutes of the session, but, you know, we could spend hours and hours talking about day two ops, um, but really four big pillars I wanna kind of cover, you know, how do we enable day two success from a platform perspective, from a security per, uh, perspective, um, and how do we also enable culture within the organization and, and try to also streamline you know, processes? Um, so let's, uh, we'll talk about platform reliability first and you know, how not to create that dumpster fire effect in your, you know, your Vault enterprise. Um, and you know, one of the, the big patterns I, I, I like to utilize and also preach is you know, automate everywhere, um, wherever possible when deploying you know, things like Vault, Console, you know, whatever. Um, you know, this enables you to be able to streamline you know, platform deployment, you know, future upgrades, even you know, down to things like codifying policies, secrets engines, and just you know, essentially be able to automate from start to finish. And you know, the, the next kind of two slides I've got are really just you know, utilize the ecosystem of, of HashiCorp products you know, for deploying Vault. And so this starts with things like you know, creating a common uh, Vault images within your organization, um, you know, customize those using a tool like Packer um, and, and leverage another tool you know, with, uh, called Terraform to, to be able to deploy on you know, whatever cloud platform, on-prem, you know, wherever your, your final resting spot is. And, you know, if you're not familiar with Packer, this is the first time you've ever heard the word, you know, the word Packer, you know, Packer essentially allows you to, you know, create an image factory within your organization. Um, so the goal here is, you know, especially if you've got multi-cloud environments for your Vault environment, instead of using all the various public cloud uh, image tools, you have a common tool um, to be able to deploy, you know, uh, Vault images seamlessly. And if you're familiar with, you know, writing, you know, typical, um, you know, HCL, JSON, whatever it may be, um, you know, should look and feel the same way like you are doing, you know, uh, previously. Um, same thing from a, a Terraform perspective. Um, one of the other uh, interesting patterns here too is if, you, if you're using, you know, kind of this concept of CICD and um, we're starting to see a trend of uh, using uh, infrastructure uh, type pipelines outside of just the app, you know, traditional pipeline. So um, be able to handle your Vault deployments across your enterprise through your, your common CICD tools, whether it's, you know, GitLab, Azure DevOps, Harness, Spinnaker, yeah, name the flavor of the day. And then um, I, I touched on this a little bit a couple minutes ago, but codify your vault policies and operations just to make things easily. You know, especially if you're a Terraform customer already, you know, leverage the power of Terraform, leverage the vault provider to um, be able to onboard, you know, engines, uh, you know, quicker, um, you know, uh, create your policies and essentially wrap, you know, your typical life cycle of revision control and, and storing in repos. Um, this will make your life a lot easier versus, you know, config files on Sally's laptop and Mike's got the, the you know, the other half of the config file. Um, and so, 
you're able to, you know, streamline, um, you know, onboarding of additional services like you traditionally would, you know, from a codification perspective. From a reliability, you know, the last thing you want to do as a, as an engineer is, you know, take that 5 p.m. call or that, you know, 4 a.m. on a Sunday that some sort of service is down within your organization. Um, so obviously, you know, you know, build reliability patterns into, you know, your vault, you know, deployment. And so I'm using GCP here, but, you know, the, the, the themes are, are consistent. Um, you know, leverage, you know, the availability zones for deployment of, of your services. You know, don't just shove everything in a, in a single availability zone. And, um, you know, we all know that, you know, AWS and Azure go down once a quarter. And the last thing you want, you know, is a particular availability zone to, uh, you know, uh, take out your, your vault services with your organization. Um, make sure that you leverage um, uh, the backend storage in a high level, high in HA fashion. Um, not all backends are fully supported from an HA. You know, the common ones are, you know, integrated storage and, and also console from a, a day two ops uh, perspective. Um, if you're looking into from a network traffic perspective, you know, um, leverage your security firewalls, rule groups, your NSGs, whatever, you know, public cloud service you're using from a firewall perspective to essentially limit, you know, your traffic to and from. Um, you don't want to expose every port into your particular cluster. You may not want to um, uh, have particular, uh, you know, IPs coming into there, you know, so leverage the power of your security groups to, to limit, you know, traffic. And then, you know, if you're not building, um, if you're building traditional like VMs, you know, look into, you know, things like encrypting your storage volumes to keep your security teams, you know, happy. Uh, Kubernetes kind of follows that same kind of pattern, except, you know, Kubernetes is uh, a little bit different, um, you know, just from a, a deployment perspective, you know, we're, we're not deploying VMs, we're, we're deploying, you know, pods or, uh, you know, a set number of, uh, you know, containers running on a, a Kubernetes cluster. Um, one of the most common, you know, things that I, I, I come across is, um, you know, from a, uh, an availability zone perspective again, you know, so look into things like uh, potentially uh, regional zones to deploy your Kubernetes uh, cluster pods versus just shoving them all in a, a common uh, zone. Um, and uh, from a Helm chart perspective, um, you know, HashiCorp makes it super easy to get a Kubernetes or a Vault Kubernetes cluster up and running. Um, feel free to, you know, also, you know, customize that for within your organization. Um, you know, if you've got certain things that you need turned on or you need um, a, a certain, uh, like an affinity control or a CPU limit, whatever it may be, um, leverage the power of the Helm charts for deployment of your Vault clusters within Kubernetes. It'll make your life so much easier. Um, as you're, 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 you're scaling your um, environment, uh, you know, across your organization, you know, you may be looking at onboarding additional BUs or uh, teams within your organization. Um, if you're running enterprise, this feature is available. If you're an open source, it's not. But, you know, leverage the power of, of namespaces to create multi-tenancy. Um, you know, be able to segment, you know, your particular teams or it could be an app team, could be a business unit, could be a country, whatever it may be. Um, but that'll make your life so much easier when you're managing things like policies, uh, what secrets engines need to be turned on and just manage the overall token life cycle. Um, you know, we just, you know, if you kind of think through the workflow, you know, uh, you know bolt clusters all up and running, you know, how are you gonna protect it? And this is where things like, you know, um, replication and DR we're gonna talk about here, but in the next uh, slide or two, we'll talk about backups, which are pretty important. You know, the last thing you wanna have is, yeah, your vault clusters go out of service and your applications can't, you know, uh, grab secrets or your users, et cetera. Um, so if you're using, you know, enterprise edition, leverage the power of disaster recovery to, you know, do active standby servers or, you know, even performance replication, you know, so that, you know, in the event of a, an outage, um, you know, your vault uh, operations are, are always up and running. Backups are super important. You know, DR is one thing just to replicate data, but you know, if you've got, if you ever run into that scenario of corruption or anything, um, being able to leverage, you know, backups of your, could be your, essentially your persistent volumes. 
Um, so you can, you know, obviously do this internal to the public clouds, you know, using native tools. There's even third party tools, you know, if you've got other um, you know, for things like a, a Veeam or a EMC data, data domain, whatever it may be. There's a lot of these tools that kind of integrate. Uh, but the key here is just, you know, make sure that you're, you're protecting these critical, you know, vault volumes in the event, you know, something goes kaboom, you're able to, to be able to recover. Um, Kubernetes, you know, it's this huge, everyone's kind of doing it now. It's this, this common theme. Um, Kubernetes makes it um, a little bit more trickier, you know, especially as we, you know, uh, could, you know sometimes, uh, you know, containers essentially have a short life cycle in Vault that's not going to have a life cycle. But in the event of maybe a Kubernetes admin does something, you know, wrong and deletes a cluster, deletes a particular um, set of pods, the last thing you want to have is, you know, your Vault service is unavailable. Um, so, you know, making sure that your, your um, per persistent volume claims are properly set up so that they're not just deleted after, you know, a, a Kubernetes delete operation, they're actually, they're essentially retained as part of the life cycle is important, um, but also protecting those from a, a backup and recovery perspective. And, you know, same scenario here, like we talked on, you know, using uh, Google Compute in this example, you know, same thing with, you know, uh, GKE, you know, taking, you know, backups uh, of your, uh, your, your HashiCorp, uh, you know, uh, persistent volumes. Um, another, um, you know, a, a thing to, as a safeguard, you know, from a, a backup recovery perspective is, is leverage the power of um, both Vault integrated snapshots and console snapshots. You know, in this scenario, you know, you're able to, um, you know, run the operator raft, you know, snapshot save command, um, which will, you know, uh, save a series of snapshots. Um, you know, as you move into, you know, the uh, enterprise version of Vault, you know, you can streamline this um, from a, um, a scheduler perspective, um, but make sure that, you know, you're properly taking backups of, you know, uh, your Vault integrated storage cluster information. And same thing, if you're using console as the back end, you know, leverage the power of the console snapshot saves to, to, pr to protect, uh, you know, the Vault attributes within console. And then from a, um, a monitoring observability, you know, you know, this is pretty key to make sure that, you know, you're hitting service level objectives, um, you know, the, the overall behavior of the, the vault operations is behaving. Um, but if you're not using observability, at least turn it on from, you know, basic, you know, monitoring that you may have on the public cloud. If you're not using like a data dog or if you're not using a, a Splunk or whatever, um, there's, a, there's also open source tools like Grafana and Prometheus where you can plug stuff in. Um, but the goal here is to get those telemetry metrics so you actually know how things are behaving. Um, you can create uh, notifications in the event of like a, a vault leader goes offline or um, magically all the vault servers reboot and now they're sealed. Um, you're going to want to be able to capture those metrics and be able to react. Um, ahead of the curve versus getting the phone call, you know, at 4 a.m. of why my app can't, you know, regenerate a, a token essentially. Um, just some of the common, you know, things to look at to get started if you just don't know what to set up from a tracing and an observability. Um, things like, you know, the vault leader, the unsealed, unsealed, is it initialized? Um, especially as you're, you're adding more business units and onboarding and just uh, overall consumption of secrets, being able to understand how the, the reads and write requests are behaving. Um, are your servers properly sized and are they, um, you know, handling workloads? Um, and then finally, you know, down to, um, you know, potentially, you know, looking at the, the garbage collection process that runs and, you know, just uh, be able to get metrics along those lines. So let's talk about security. Um, you know, obviously, you know, security drives a, a lot from a, a day two operations perspective. Um, you know, a lot of times if, if you're not the security person, the other side of the, the organization is always kind of marching down your hallway and, you know, trying to, you know, essentially push you along of how they, you know, what compliance and regulations you need to hit. Um, so, this picture actually here is, I, I saw this in a blog about, I think it was like six months ago, is actually pretty hilarious. Um, uh, HashiCorp uh, a staff engineer um, actually posted this and wrote a pretty cool article. Um, but, you know, this is a pretty common pattern here, you know, if you're not using auto unseal is, you know, protect these uh, master keys. Um, you know, don't have it, 
spit it out into a Slack channel like this picture um, where everyone now has the keys and now you've got to rekey everything. Same thing with the root token. Um, you know, so the goal here is, you know, if you're not using auto unseal, you know, protect these, you know, don't write them in a notepad doc on your on your desktop or a post that note, you know, properly, you know, secure these. Um, auto and seal, which you know came out a while ago, completely alleviates this and streamlines this, so you don't have that aha moment. Um, you know, if you're using uh, the power of you know the public cloud providers, you can you know use their KMS providers to to kind of handle this you know for you and, and simplify. Um, from if you're using console as a as a backend, um, it's important to lock down the the vault um, you know specifics using console ACLs or ACLs. Sorry, um, so you know people just aren't you know gaining access that that they shouldn't um, you know from a, an overall a security surface perspective. Um, rotate your your root your root tokens. You know the the first rule is you know avoid them, you know, you use them as a one-time thing just to get a vault server up and running, um, you know, either rotate it or traditionally just revoke it. Um, and then you can usually generate it on the fly when you need it. Um, but the goal here is, you know, you don't want to be always, you know, leveraging the root token or, you know, you essentially passed it out to everybody within, within the organization. Um, this, you know, enlarges the risk surface from a security perspective, you know, since the root token, you know, is, you know, has a lot of permissions, you know, behind the scenes. From, a, you know, an overall just OS perspective, um, you know, how do you, what are some things I can kind of do to keep the security team happy from a hardening perspective? You know, obviously, you know, try not to run uh, Vault as the as the root user. You know, you traditionally will will set up a service account. Um, you will, you know, turn off things like core dumps. So, you know, the event of somebody forcing a, a core dump, you know, they essentially can't get hold of, you know, any sort of encryption keys. Um, you want to not run this as a multi, you know, um, tenant pod or, or even a server, you know, you essentially want to have just the vault binaries running. You're not going to want to run like a Tomcat web server and some other stuff kind of running on this. Um, so make sure, you know, you're, you're keeping this, um, you know, independent. Um, always use the trusted, you know, images. You know, this is a pretty common, you know, pattern or security, you know, construct we see in the industry where um, not always everyone always grabs trusted images or, or enterprise to prove. Um, you know, you may just do a Google search and just, you know, kind of find something in a Docker hub or a GitHub repo and, and kind of pull it down. And um, it's, you know, there's been some interesting, you know, articles out there with you know, people doing uh, Bitcoin mining um, behind the scenes embedded into a, a container image. So, Always, you know, use the trusted repos um, from HashiCorp to, to grab these images, or if you have your own life cycle of, of approved images, you know, making sure that the platform teams or whoever's deploying Vault is, you know, grabbing the, the correct images. So let's talk about process. Um, we talked a lot on the technical side, you know, that's just one side of it, the equation. Um, you know, how do we streamline process within the organization um, to simplify Vault Day 2 Ops. Um, you know, first and foremost, it's, it's important to get your house in order, um, you know, from a process perspective. So, you know, this could be, you know, things like, you know, you know run books so that your teams know how to operate the platform. Things are clearly, you know, kind of documented from an operations and they know how to, you know, handle specific tasks. Um, you know, if a help desk is kind of involved and they have no clue what Volt is other than they can spell it, you know, they can easily, you know, have documentation, you know, to follow along. Um, you know, as you grow and mature the platform within your organization, you know, being able to have onboarding frameworks is pretty key um, so that you can consume Volt as a service. Um, you know, what is that you know, oper you know um, how do teams, you know, successfully onboard it? What does that look like? Um, what are the test acceptance plans, et cetera? Um, onboarding is going to be pretty key, you know, from a framework, you know, as you expand, you know, your Vault consumption. And then, um, you know, from an upgrade perspective, you know, uh, what is, your, you know, what does the upgrade strategy look like in release strategy as newer versions of, of Vault come along? You know, how does that, you know, tie into, uh, the platform and the day two support to handle those upgrades. 
um, you know, what does that deployment strategy look like? And then finally, from a communication is always key. You know, how do you, first of all, you know, champion Volt within your organization from an internal perspective to continue to grow the, the footprint of it within your organization, but also, you know, just communication from an operations and how the teams are going to come together and essentially, you know, work in unison. And then the, the last kind of pillar I wanted to hit on is obviously culture. Um, you know, without culture, it, you know, will make it super hard to, to succeed. Um, and, you know, getting teams onboarded and, and making, you know, um, you know, those various teams successful. Um, a, a common thing I, I, I like to talk about is this concept of a, a vault community of excellence, you know, to, to enable the success within the organization and, and continue growing, you know, vault from, you know, day three to, you know, day 300 and, you know, 92, you know, whatever it may be. Um, but, you know, the goal of this, you know, concept of a, a community of excellence is to essentially, you know, enable Vault um, to be supported through agile approaches, you know, bringing teams together, um, you know, from a culture perspective. Um, they're no longer on separate island or, or, or silos or islands. And, you know, um, you know, this community of excellence will enable and empower these, you know, various teams, um, you know, throughout, you know, the, the Vault journey. And, you know, just, you know, from a roles responsibilities, this is just kind of just a, a quick sample, but, you know, the, the, the goal here is to kind of, kind of outline, you know, what, what do different personas kind of handle, um, you know, what are some potential, uh, uh, you know, roles responsibilities that different teams are, you know, if you, not every organization might have every one of these roles. Um, but, you know, the goal here, you know, we're creating, you know, the, the center of excellence is, you know, all the way from leadership down to, you know, the platform operator, um, you know, every, everyone's all on the same page, you know, everyone's empowered um, to make this successful. Developers, you know, uh, from an app perspective are able to consume, you know, the platform and, you know, be able to, um, you know, essentially build and release software faster. Um, that's all that I got. Um, I, um, no demos, but, um, you know, if anyone, if you got any follow-up questions, you know, my email address is at the bottom and, um, you know, enjoy the rest of uh, day two of Hashi Talks. Thank you.